This video follows on from the previous texturing tutorial for Headshot Auto Mode, and will focus on more advanced texturing techniques as well as photo alignment using morph sliders in Headshot's Pro Mode. Switching to Pro Mode is a simple push of the right hand button. This opens the Generate Character UI where you can choose body and skin type presets as before, but let's use the default male settings and see the result. Now, remember that Auto Mode produces models with hair if the subject in the photo has hair, and it also produces models with low resolution face textures. The primary difference with Pro models is that Pro doesn't produce hair models, though you can use the hair models generated in Auto Mode if you wish, but it does produce high resolution face textures, and a more refined match between the original photo and the model's facial features. You'll also notice that after switching to Pro Mode, the Headshot UI now contains a checkbox for image matching tools. We'll cover these in a few minutes, but first, you can see that Pro Mode includes the same texture adjustment tools for base skin presets and masking, which are in Auto Mode. We'll take a further look at these. Now, you can use the skin color to fine tune the balance between the face and the rest of the textures, but you can also use it to see exactly what the current mask approach is doing to what extent it's blending between the face and the rest of the head texture. And the degree of blend, right down to the eyelid rims, is controlled by the selections made in the face and eyelid mask range on the Headshot UI. But probably the most obvious issue with the textures on the current model is that some of the subject's hair from the original photo is showing through on the forehead. And this is the kind of issue you can solve easily by simply changing the face mask range. Headshot has various procedural masking options which will help in different circumstances, depending on the issues with the original photo. And not just for the face, which includes the facial boundary as well as the nose and mouth, but also for the eyes, where you can choose the degree of masking between the original photo texture and the base skin layer. And the reason I'm demonstrating blending and masking first on this Pro model, before showing photo alignment, is that it provides a quick way to fix various texturing issues, which is particularly useful if you're on a deadline and if aiming for a precise likeness is not a major requirement. And whilst the procedural approaches will address many issues coming from your original photo, it's important to be aware that you can also edit any of the masks or base textures in external editors like Photoshop to create your own custom maps and masks to produce the particular effects you're looking for. But to finish off this section about procedural texturing, don't forget that there are also a number of approaches to skin as well as to base hair and, for males, beard and chin stubble mapping, which can all be used to quickly produce decent results on pro models. And this is even without needing to progress to photo alignment. Now, Headshot's masking and blending approach has lots of possibilities, even more if you're creating your own custom maps, but if you're aiming for the best likeness possible, this is where Headshot's image matching tools come in. And to demonstrate how this works, here I've taken off all of the masking and blending so that you can see how the original photo is projected onto the model. Then selecting the Activate Image Matching Tools checkbox, this automatically matches the current camera view with the original photo as an overlay for reference. You can adjust the opacity of the overlay, make it grayscale as well as change the contrast. You can also change the perspective by adjusting the camera lens. This can be particularly useful if you have the original camera information, but if you don't, the default setting generally works quite well. Now, the principle of headshot image alignment is quite simple. Once the alignment tools are activated, you can compare the model with the original photograph and you can see the differences. And the better the match between the model and the photo, the better the likeness will be. So the way to improve the match is by using morphs, and Headshot ships with a huge range of morphs which have been designed specifically for this kind of photo alignment. And depending on how precise you want the match to be, this can take time, so now I'm speeding up the video, but you'll notice that as I use the morphs to adjust the model, I keep checking the match by changing the opacity of the overlay. And as I continue with morphing, you can see that the model is changing shape to better match the original photo. Now, the more observant you can be, the more precise you can be in using the morphs to match not only the facial features, but also the subject's head, ears and jaw shape. And obviously, the more accurate the resulting model will be. But it's important to be aware 
that the morphing is currently taking the original face texture with it. So whilst you're changing the shape, you're also actually distorting the original texture. And this is where Headshot's reproject function comes in. Reproject creates a new face texture from the original photo based on the current camera view of the model, which is now better aligned to the photo than before. And the great thing about Reproject is that you can use it at any time, so you can keep making further morph changes to the model and then reproject to match the texture to the changes. So the workflow of image matching is straightforward. A bit like a game of spot the difference and then reducing the difference, it entails using the headshot morphs to match the model to the original photo, along with reprojecting the photo back onto the model. I started image matching here with no masking applied so that I could get a clearer view of the original mismatch between the photo and the model. And whilst I could spend much more time getting an even better match, I'm happy with the results so far, so now I'll return to masking and blending to polish the model a bit further at this stage. Now, I demonstrated how to use masking to remove the hair at the forehead earlier in this video, but as well as masking, you can also use image editing to preserve more of the original photo in order to create a more subtle blend. So here, I'm using the cloning stamp in Photoshop to take out the hair on the original photo projected texture, and careful use of the cloning stamp, along with dodge and burn brushes to soften contrasting areas, is a straightforward way to improve photo-based textures for blending. So back in Headshot, I simply update the texture which has been automatically brought back in from Photoshop, and you can see that this produces a more subtle blend at the forehead. And to complete this demonstration of using texturing and morph sliders to improve headshot models in Pro Mode, I'm finishing off by first adding some procedural stubble to the skull and chin through headshot itself, and next bringing in some stock hair and adjusting its textures to approximate the subject's hair from the original photo. Though you could of course use hair models created by headshot auto mode, or bring in hair models from external applications. Now, whilst this model can certainly be improved further, getting it to this stage has taken me about an hour, starting with a single front face photo of the subject. And compared to modeling from scratch or using scans or photogrammetry, from a single decent photo, Headshot can produce professional results in a fraction of the time. Thanks for watching.